Hello and welcome to this course on the 19th century novel. In this session, I would offer uh, a brief overview of some of the major concerns of the 18th century novel so that we get a good idea of how these concerns get carried on onto the uh, 19th century novel too. So, uh, let us begin with how the novel is perceived by some of the major practitioners of the genre. So, here we have a quotation by D. H. Lawrence um, and this excerpt has been taken from uh, his essay Why the Novel Matters uh, published in 1936. So, he says, I am a man and alive for this reason I am a novelist and being a novelist I consider myself superior to the saint, the scientist, the philosopher and the poet who are all great masters of different bits of man alive but never get the whole hog. Only in the novel are all things given play. So, the last idea in this excerpt is very very interesting uh, in that uh, he believes that um, various domains of human uh, life and human society get full play uh, in the uh, narrative of uh, fiction more than in any other professions uh, such as the philosopher or, or the poet. So, uh, the 18th century novels here I have a, a list of some of the major uh, fiction writers of that period beginning with Henry uh, Fielding here in this list um, Tobias Smollett, Daniel Defoe, uh, Lawrence Stern, Samuel Richardson. So, Samuel Richardson. So, all these writers uh, practiced uh, their hand at uh, writing the novel in the mode of the picaresque or uh, the epistolary. So, these two are uh, narrative modes uh, in which uh, the, uh, the writing adopts a particular way of uh, relating a story. So, in the picaresque we get uh, a central character traveling quite a bit and narrating the experiences that he uh, or she has come across. Uh, in his uh, journeys. In terms of the epistolary novels, we have the novel in the form of uh, letters. So, through letters we get a sense of what is the uh, significant event about which the novel is. So, let us begin with uh, Daniel Defoe, uh, he is considered uh, the father of the English novel and uh, Robinson Crusoe is the uh, major work um, by which uh, Defoe is well known to this day. So, uh, what is exciting about Robinson Crusoe is the fact that critics uh, perceive that um, Crusoe simultaneously creates his text as well as his bourgeoisie life. Um, in other words, Crusoe writes or uh, keeps a record um, uh, of, of his life um, on the island as well as he recreates his entire bourgeoisie middle class life on that particular island. So, two things are happening simultaneously a kind of uh, record is being created as well as the life itself is being created once again. So, Robinson Crusoe published in 1719 um, is a story of a whole collection of wonders. So, um, it is a narrative that describes wonderful fantastical events uh, that happened to Crusoe on that particular island and um, Crusoe is amazed at his fortunes uh, and uh, God's guidance of his life. So, he is um, both uh, uh, having an adventure as well as being guided by God in that particular adventure. Um, and uh, the Bible, nature and um, the notion of introspection of Crusoe about his past are uh, some of the key concerns of this particular novel. So, uh, more about uh, Crusoe uh, in that we have a fictional account of one individual's experiences in this particular uh, narration. It is both singular and new, it is very unique and it is very very novel uh, and that is an exciting element of this genre uh, and it is about an ordinary individual, it is not about an extraordinary uh, character, not, not about a celebrity whereas it is about an ordinary individual 
even though his ordeals, his adventures may be extraordinary or fantastic. And um, as we can see that in this novel, there's a great emphasis on his inner life, uh, though those inner life and its preoccupations can be understood mostly in spiritual terms. Further interesting aspects of Robinson Crusoe uh, is in relation to the way it is narrated, the manner of its narration. Uh, in fact, it asked the reader to believe in its probability. Um, these things are quite likely to happen. It's very, very probable and it uh, uh, invites the uh, it invites the reader to follow that kind of um, adventure. And uh, a probability is a very interesting word because uh, in those days it was the most common word for what made a narrative believable. So what is probable is in fact what is believable. And um, in fact uh, the, the title page claims that, that the story is told with modesty, with seriousness and with religious application of events. And this is very, very important because um, the writer claims that uh, the novel is in tune with uh, the world of spirituality, with the world of religion. Therefore, there is nothing untoward uh, or immoral is associated with this particular fiction. So, modesty, seriousness, um, the quality of being very, very uh, somber, the tone of being somber, uh, of being grave uh, in relation to the set of thoughts as well as the spiritual elements are um, crucial to how a novel is being uh, received in those days. So, uh, let us consider the term uh, novel. Uh, in fact, in the preface to Robinson Crusoe, there are several words for the uh, narrative such as story, adventures, account, life, history, fact, but none of that um, set of words uh, is the word novel. So, uh, the word novel itself is a unique uh, term that is um, that's kind of evolving in that period. Um, novel is something to do with novelty, something that is new and unique. Uh, other major uh, uh, writers of this particular genre are um, Samuel Richardson um, and, and uh, Fielding and uh, Tobias Smollett, but we will look at uh, Samuel Richardson here uh, for a minute. Uh, his work uh, Pamela was published in 1740 and it talks about a servant girl's uh, resistance to her master's uh, uh, advances uh, of, of seduction and it was a best bestseller in those days. And it also like Robinson Crusoe made a claim to being very, very serious uh, uh, narrative, serious fiction. And again, once again, there is this uh, claim that this is a morally respectable genre that that uh, middle class readers, respectable readers can uh, have access to and gain something useful for their uh, personal lives too. Uh, epistolary fiction uh, is the mode in which uh, this novel Pamela was written by Samuel Richardson and its figures uh, is uh, Pamela uh, and, um, and as I mentioned before letters are the way through which the readers understand the novel's plot and uh, what is exciting about this novel is the fact that um, the heroine uh, Pamela, the central female character transforms the nature of the process prospective villain through her measures, through her attitudes and behaviors and uh, faith. Clarissa is another very uh, significant novel written by Samuel Richardson and it has according to several critics uh, psychological complexity and uh, tragic ambitions. And for the first time we realized that the novel is not just a minor genre but it is evolving into what uh, could be termed as great literature. Uh, and in fact even Fielding admired this particular work Clarissa by Richardson. Slowly we see that the novel genre is achieving respectability, perhaps even literary dignity.
and Stern is another uh, important uh, practitioner of fiction in the 18th century. He is well known for his Tristram Shandy and once again the novel is um, gaining this epithet of being very literary and uh, Stern becomes a celebrity author uh, in relation to this particular work. And we can also see that there are autobiographical as well as fictional elements uh, in this particular novel. In fact, um, the narrator of that novel has both these elements, um, the elements of the autobiographical as well as the uh, fictional. Henry Fielding's uh, Tom Jones was again a massive hit. It was a big success and it was published in 1749. And Tom Jones is a significant landmark novel in the history of the genre because it was a big inspiration for Victorian novelists. And this is the title page that we have for this um, novel, Tom Jones. Again, uh, the mode with which Tom Jones was written is the picaresque uh, and as I mentioned uh, a short while ago uh, uh, a picaresque novel has protagonists who travel the roads of England and they encounter characters from every class and in fact it's a journey through contemporary uh, society and this journey was very very attractive and it was very very influential in the sense that it was picked up by later uh, novelists such as Charles Dickens and we also have uh, Tobias Smollett's um, Roderick Random and Humphrey Clink written um, in this kind of mode, um, the picaresque. So, the novel was beginning to be a commercial product. Uh, it was a commodity that could be sold at the market and, um, and it made a lot of money for the publishers. And for the first time, we also uh, get a new uh, professional category, a new bunch of entrepreneurs who were the booksellers. And um, the booksellers, as I said, made a lot of money because there was an expanding uh, reading public and this uh, reading public Public, um, consisted of genteel readers, uh, genteel readers uh, most probably referring to the middle class readers who are very, very literate. So, and they also had the money and the time uh, to spend on um, reading. Circulating libraries is another major phenomenon that it has um, evolved uh, in that particular period uh, in the 18th century. So uh, this is a new kind of literary consumption that is uh, reading, uh, in, in, uh, reading books borrowed from the library is a new phenomenon and um, the readers uh, began to borrow novels uh, for subscription from circulating libraries and the growth of the circulating libraries is um, in tandem with uh, the gro uh, growth of the novel genre and um, we can see that the novels are the mainstay in these uh, circulating libraries. In other words, um, the circulating libraries stocked uh, novels primarily, um, so the, the readers preferred to read novels primarily, but uh, reading, uh, buying books is still a luxury for the majority of the population, which is why libraries became very popular. And there are references to libraries in um, some of the uh, fiction that was written in the day, as well as in some of the uh, uh, plays. For example, uh, The Rivals um, by Sheridan uh, is a play which uh, contains a heroine who, who uh, frequently resorts to the circulating libraries. Okay, book reviews is another uh, major phenomenon uh, in the magazines. Uh, so book reviews began to be published in the monthly review, uh, which came out in 1749. Uh, the reviews of uh, novels became a major, um, uh, major news item, major item in these magazines. So it was a sta staple fare. And uh, we also need to remember that in uh, in in, in uh, juxtaposition with uh, 
um, this massive um, attraction that the novels had uh, in, in relation to the booksellers and, and the circulating libraries, we also had a, a section uh, from the society, uh, from the 18th century society, which uh, warned readers of the dangers of novel reading, uh, especially the warnings were targeted at young women uh, because um, they were seen as the typical uh, category of, of readers. So, um, they did not want uh, women to be correct by uh, the events, the stories that were um, uh, that were being played out in these uh, fictions. So uh, while uh, the novel was becoming very, very popular, uh, both as as a pastime, as a, as a as a luxury commodity, as well as as uh, uh, as a part of um, the phenomenon of the uh, circulating libraries, there was this contrary idea that the novels were. Um, possibly corrupting influences and were uh, especially bad for young women. But uh, despite all the warnings and, and um, the cautionary tales from, um, you know, uh, from a certain section of the uh, 18th century society, from the 1770s, uh, the novel was becoming increasingly respectable. Uh, in fact, uh, Frances Burney's Evelyn, published in uh, 1778, um, talks about a young woman's entrance into the world and it did that uh, in, in relation to the idea of um, you know the story being a morally impeccable uh, as well as um, being very satirical of some of the uh, negative impulses in the society and Jane Austen was a big fan of Frances Burney's Evelyn. So, uh, the novel constantly uh, swam against the current uh, uh, against the current which was um, looking at it uh, in a very very critical angle. So, it, it was a kind of uh, emerging as the winner as uh, time progressed as the 18th century uh, blended into the 19th century. So, um, thank you for uh, listening to this section of the lecture. I will catch up with you in the next one.